Hey, thanks for checking out this video. This is the strategy that we've been using in our defensive wars, and this is designed for enemy factions that like the Zerg, which is why this is our anti-Zerg tactic, to prevent spreading out thin versus an enemy that likes the Zerg. So we stack one objective. But before I talk about the strategy, let's quickly glance over the group composition. So quickly, one and two are flank and the death squad. We just kind of call it death squad, but it's a flank role anyways. Group three and four are used as flex, group five as tanks, Group 6 to 9 is the main body, and group 10 is siege. And groups 1 and 2 consist of heavy or medium armor, melee DPS, lots of hammers, and two top tier healers to keep our guys alive. And usually players in this group consist of more aggressive playstyles, so keep that in mind. And then flex group as well consists of heavy or medium armor, melee DPS, CC abilities with high DPS, and these are usually smart tactical and defensive playstyles that like to protect our backline. Primarily, that's what Flex will be doing, but we'll get into that later. And usually you can get away with one healer in this group or two cleric builds. Just depends on what you're looking for. And as well, group 5 will consist of heavy armor, sword and shield, with some CC, lots of cons, and one top tier healer in this group. Sometimes you can get away with uh, three tanks, one melee DPS, with a lot of cons, but usually you can go for just the bulk of your tanks being in this group. This will be your tank group anyways, so you'll send them where needed. But we'll get, of course, into that later. Group 6 to 9 will be the main body, and this will consist of mages, frontline DPS, and one healer per group. There will be a lot of melee DPS in this group as well, uh, of course, with frontline DPS. But these guys are just primarily getting onto the flag, doing damage, and just doing main ball things. So there's not much to talk about with group composition here. But anyway, Siege as well consists of ranged players, maybe muskets or bows, and Siege players. So that's pretty much all there is. So here we are at Windsward Fort, and here we have A, B, and C flag. And a part of this strategy is to drop one of the small flags. And what I mean by small flags is A and C. A and C are the small flags, while B is the big flag. So you kind of got to choose which one you're going to sacrifice and drop to the enemy. This is just what we've done in all these wars to be successful with this strategy. I know dropping a flag isn't the best thing, but it's what we were doing for a long time. So in this situation... I believe what we're honestly going to drop is A, let's just call it A that we're dropping, and we're going to hold B and C. So right off the bat, groups uh, 1 through 3 are going to come over to C. Now 1 to 3 is uh, your death squad and your flex group, one of the groups from your flex group. Now group 4 will be, be protecting the back line over here, while groups uh, group 10 is always on siege over here. And then your groups 5 through 9 will be fighting on B flag. So what you have here hopefully is that the enemy is going to push for B. And this is what we've seen most of the time from purples that like to Zurich. And then sometimes you'll see a small little push towards C. But now let's go into some hypotheticals of how this will be set up. All right, so it's the start of the war, the 30 minute mark, and groups one to three come out the door right here. And immediately you start to see enemies pushing towards here. And it's a big Zerg and you're kind of panicking like, oh, sheesh, what do we do here? Well, group four, which is your flex group, is going to stay. Well, groups five to nine are actually going to rotate over. And then as well, you might send group one over here or group two. Sorry, this looks so poorly, but groups one or two will now go back to the flag and you're going to have to fight off the enemy pretty much here right in front of the point. You're always going to be wanting to fight on the lip of the point. And what I mean by the lip of the point is you'll notice that uh, once I clear all of this, you'll notice that the point is always a circle of course with the flag in the center um and now since we're facing towards the enemies the lip of the point pretty much coming from over here is going to be this little spot so think of this as c it's it's going to be this little spot right here so you want to stack your your tanks right here to defend this point as much as you can put the tanks on there and put as much damage onto that point as you can put some mines down as well 
And now let's talk mines really quickly. I've seen a lot of people think that placing mines here in the woods and such is the best move to block uh, the flank going on, but that is just entirely wrong. What you want to be doing is you want to be stacking mines all along the points like this. You want to be putting them just on the outside and the upper lip of the point. So when enemies push in, they're met with uh, just burning. Uh, you don't want to be trying to destroy flanks. Um, now that they kind of changed the way haste pots work as well, it's actually even more useless to be putting those mines on the side of the points. Just please put them on the top of the points or to wherever they have the most enemies. You can also place them underneath people's feet. Alright, so back into some more hypotheticals now. So this isn't very accurately represented, but group 5 is just representing that they're on the lip of the point. Group 4 is in the back line, and 4 to 9 are just kind of in the mix here. So now you're starting to notice that your whole entire enemy is pushing right here, and that's where their main body is. And you, you group three is the group one and to three are dealing with very light resistance over here what needs to happen is group one to two need to get active into their back line so groups one to two need to immediately rotate over to help the front line and they will put as much damage as they can into their back line and try to focus those healers as much as possible keep those healers busy to keep heals off the point now, what also might happen is group 4 might not be able to hold this by themselves. So group 4 might not be able to hold this themselves. They might get some active presence in the back line, and they need some extra help as well. Now, group 3 is completely alone on C-Flag. They're going to rotate. They're going to come help their flex, their other flex group, and help to assist with this. They'll hold down the back line, get this cleared out, and then rotate back. Now, a scenario that may happen in these wars is that they choose to zerg the flag that you want to be sacked right away. So let's say they, zer they zerg A immediately, and they full force to A, and they take that right away. Now the front line is going to be a little weirdly represented here. What's going to happen is they're going to push up to the walls, they're going to start hitting your siege, and they're going to start doing damage to, to, to all the siege weapons that are kind of on these little platforms here. There's three siege weapons on each, I believe. And they're going to do damage to all three of them. And uh, your, your best bet here is, is not to, to kind of just let this happen. You're going to want to send your groups one to two over. Okay. Then you're going to establish your group five here. Reestablish the front line. The back line is going to push to here, and then group three is going to actually fill the top role right here. Now, what they're going to notice is that there's nobody holding C flag, and they're just going to brute force this B for a little bit. And then group three is actually going to have to go back, and your groups one to two are going, or, or group one can kind of stay protecting the front line, and uh, uh, group two might have to go over here to defend uh, the, the push now coming from the war camp on respawns. All right, and now we'll get into another little hypothetical here. Now, let's say B is getting completely overran. It's not looking good over on B. Groups 1 and 2 are already putting in work with group 3 holding this down. Uh, so let's scratch out that real quick. And 1 to 2 are also over here protecting. Now, this push is not going well. We're starting to lose B now, one of the most important things that we've found in wars is stacking CC abilities and all abilities. There is a very OP thing about stacking abilities onto the point. Now, I, I, I can't stress this enough. Get one very vocal shot caller that loves to call out CC in three, two, one, hit it. This has worked so many times in our wars to clear enemies off the point and to just deal with uh, just a, a nuisances like that. So make sure you're stacking that CC. Now, if that doesn't end up working out and you end up losing that B flag, it's no worry. Okay, it's going to be very chaotic from here, um, but I'm sure you'll be able to deal with it as we have many times before. So now we've lost B. B is now a rotational flag for the enemy. 
they're going to end up uh, very heavily pressing towards C this direction. Now, a little bit to as how you establish your your groups. Going to have groups three to four in the back line, trying to protect as much as possible. Group five on the lip of the point. Group one is going to go off to the kind of the left side. Group two, kind of more on the right side. And then uh, I'm going to just go six through nine, kind of just in the mix there. So groups one will be off to kind of the right side and group two kind of off to the left. And what may happen is the group one might end up fighting absolutely nothing over towards the left side of the point. They might not be able to find mages. They might end up going over here uh, and assisting with group two and defending this heavy B push if that's happening. Now, uh, w w w you're just going to have to hunker down on C objectives, get as many cannons firing in as possible. Uh, this is going to be very hard to control one point, which is definitely the downside of this strategy. If you lose one point, then you only have one more to deal with because you always sack one objective in the early game. All right, and we're moving back over to another hypothetical once again. Group five is on the lip. Groups one and two are in the back line. Groups three to four are defending. And groups six through nine are kind of just in the mix. So what's going to happen here in this hypothetical is now the enemy is getting absolutely destroyed here and they can't push through this and they're just being counter -zerged. When the, What they're going to do is they're going to do a new rotation group over to C. They're going to, they're going to make a big play over to C on respawns. What immediately needs to happen, groups one to two, over there. Group three, over there as well. If they can clean up, because they're so heavily focused melee DPS groups, if they can clean up C, then that is awesome. If they can't clean up C, then what might happen here is you might send group six or group nine over or even group four. Group four primarily would be the choice. Um, as long as the back line isn't getting hit on B, group four would come over right away. Now, heavily relying on rotations is going to be this, the, the worst part about this role and making sure everybody kind of understands the rotation aspect to this. It's going to be the biggest challenge. What, what may happen here is C is gaining ground. They're starting to tick the point. They're at 50% and groups one to four are already here dealing with this and six to nine have very light resistance send group six over just to do some cleaning and then group one and two can get into the back line and try to deal with the healers as much as possible as well make sure you're stacking those cc abilities as much as you possibly can um but an another thing that may happen here is c may be the big flag b might be the small flag so account for this well let's let's get rid of all of this and let's account for this. So what might end up happening is they might e end up sending the Zerg force over the sea. Now what needs to happen is the same thing. Group 5 and then 6 through 9 with group 4 protecting the back line. And then as well groups 1 and 2 over here with group 3 defending the back line. Same thing. So it can always transition um, you may need to consider C being the big flag at the moment and B being the small flag. All right, so now into our next hypothetical, which I am not very great at explaining, but we've lost everything, A, B, and C, and now they're into our walls. We haven't defended very much from our walls, so I'm not very educated on how to defend this situation. But what's most, li most likely going to happen is they are going to push one of the gates. Let me just draw out the gates in the back. All right, so here in black are our gates, basically fi the five gates. And ooh, where are we going to say that the enemy took the last flag? Let's, take, let's play C. Let's say they took C right away. And now their main force is going to be 
pushing towards this wall. So it's going to be going towards the right side wall. Um, the orientation is not correct here. So make sure you refer to this as the right wall, mid wall, left wall, and then back walls. Uh, uh, back left, back right. So here we are, they're going to come to C, and then they're going to send the rotational group around to come get onto, uh, to get onto the platform and start uh, to break through these back doors. Now, this is inevitably going to happen where they do this, and as well, they're going to send another group here uh, towards the mid gate. So you, and, and their flag is right here. Sorry, I should probably draw that in. I'll just draw it in black. It's fine. Perfect. Um, so they're gonna take all. The, they're gonna take at least three of these walls right off the hop. You're gonna need to just defend. Like there's no simpler way to put this than just simply defend. Um, you're gonna want to get as much melee DPS as you can defending. You know the lips. Group five here may actually need to separate completely, but uh, realistically, you would want to put group five onto the main push objective, which is going to be where the last flag was dropped. So group five will heavily defend here. Groups one and two are going to be defending the walls as much as possible. Uh, as well, six to nine are going to be established here. And groups three to four are going to try to def defend um, the mid push. Uh, it, it's going to be basically very hard for groups one and two and three and four in this position but you're gonna have to do your best and of course now you have group 10 which is siege group 10 can be thrown pretty much wherever needed um but group 10 most likely is range players so they're not going to be very useful they're going to just kind of sit up on the walls do some damage and hopefully they do enough damage now the hypotheticals here aren't very clear to even talk about defending the fort is just a matter of chaos um defending uh the objectives here is a much easier thing to explain and do versus trying to explain a fort defense the fort defense is very nuanced in the way that it will go on it's just basically a master clusterfuck and it's very hard to deal with so if you do end up dropping all the points, then good luck to you. I hope you guys can defend the walls in time. Try your best. Just put as much melee DPS onto the points as you can, or onto the walls, I should say, as you possibly can, and back that up with some mage damage, range damage, and make sure your tanks are there supporting as well. There's really not much to talk about once those walls are done, but guys, I hope you kind of learn something from holding or how we hold these objectives and uh yeah hopefully you guys can incorporate this into your strategy but anyways guys thank you for watching the youtube video check out my other youtube video on the wars to see this actually in effect and how we actually use these uh strategies in the real game because of course we can talk strategy all day here, but it's never going to work if you can't execute it. So guys, take a look at my old videos uh, and see if you can incorporate our strategies into yours. But guys, again, thank you for watching the video and have a nice day.